You're not alone if you've ever said VMware Cloud Foundation is not flexible. Especially, it makes sense if you've come from a background of doing everything manually. And what I mean by that is vCenter, vSAN, NSX, especially NSX, and all those sort of different vCenters that you had to deploy. If you had to do that manually back in the day, you could configure anything you really wanted to do to the nth degree. Now, yes, some of that has changed with VMware Cloud Foundation and it's been streamlined and automated for you, which means some of it is a bit more restrictive but I'm talking specifically about NSX design, edge cluster design in this video. Now, ordinarily up until version 5.1, or historically I should say, you were restricted by what SDDC manager would allow you to deploy in terms of upstream BGPPs, types of edge clusters, and if it's static or BGP, as well as what you could and couldn't do from a T0 and T1 routing perspective. As of version 5.1, you are now able to deploy an empty edge cluster effectively and what I'm calling a flexible deployment to then be able to do what you need to do from your T0, T1 and routing perspective. Why is that good? Because you can now do things that you couldn't do before. For example, multi-hop BGP off the bat. You could do things like a T0 only deployment. You could do everything that you couldn't do before and we'll go through some of those examples in more detail before I show you how to actually deploy this. In order to show you the benefits of this flexible edge cluster deployment, I first need to show you the workflow to be able to create an edge cluster through the SDDC Manager UI and alternatively the API, which will be the same options just through API. Now, to deploy an edge cluster is quite simple. You go to your workload domains, click add edge cluster. You go through the checklist, make sure you've met all the criteria and then select all and click begin. Remember, this is not a video on showing you how to deploy an edge cluster. If you want that, have a look at the video down below. But this is just showing you the differences and then deploying an empty net edge cluster. I'll give it a quick name and I'll pre-populate all this and we'll come back. Right, so I've pre-populated the form. As you can already see on this first page in the general info where you have to name a T0 and a T1. That's something that's already changed in this new workflow or this new API where you don't have to do any of that. It's literally just the edges and the edge cluster. Then you put in the edge profile type and then effectively it's either default or custom and that's just setting up the BFD and cluster profile name and all that sort of stuff. Then it's just passwords on this screen. I'll click next now that I'm done. On this screen here, we've got three options. What will the edge cluster be for essentially? And traditionally we're talking about, it's either gonna be for workload management, which means the VMs are deployed with a specific form factor. In this case, if you click on workload management, it's large and it's deployed in active active for the T0. It also adds a tag that is and add, adds a tag to the VMs and the objects in NSX to say they're eligible for workload management. And so that way, when you go to workload management, those edges uh, or the edge cluster appears for you to be able to deploy and enable workload management. AVNs or application virtual networks, is, 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 as you see here, the form factor is medium, active, active again, but you have a choice of active, active, active standby. And AVNs are, again, if you wanna know what they are in the video below, but effectively just logical segments for your ARIA suite applications and everything in your SDDC. Then you've got custom and your choices are again, the size or the form factor of the edge and what active availability mode you want for your T0. Now, stopping there, there's not a huge amount of difference that you can or can't do from a T0 perspective. Again, you have the option to not deploy it at all with the new API. The difference that you could also see is from a T1 perspective, we've got a few different HA modes now, if you will. We've got active active, which you can pick. You've got active standby, but now you've also got DR only, which you can't do through this workflow or distributed routing. At the active active from a tier one perspective is means you can actually enable stateful services, which you also can't do through the SDDC manager UI. So you've already got a couple of benefits there of being able to flexibly deploy your edge clusters. Then you've got choices of static or eBGP, and then your ASN configuration and then the rest of the form is just configuring your agent nodes for your management networks, TEPs and all that. And again, if you wanna see what that looks like, it's in the video below. So we'll pause the config wizard there. We've already seen the benefits of how a flexible deployment would work. You would be able to collapse your T0 and T1 if you wanted to. You don't have to configure them as it is stipulated in the config wizard. You could 
add EBGP multi-hop and the precursor to this video I should have also mentioned was a customer really wanted to deploy an edge cluster with EBGP multi-hop because they had to go through a couple of edge nodes oh sorry not edge nodes a couple of upstream layer 3 routers and they weren't able to bring up the, the deployment or successfully deploy an edge cluster because it just wasn't possible it's expecting a next top or whatnot you the other option is also for the t0 you can also enable ospf if you wanted to again it depends on what you're trying to achieve now the whole benefit of being able to do this flexible deployment is that you can still you can still lifecycle manage through sdc manager it will still see those edge nodes but whatever you configure in nsx is completely up to you and there's a lot of configuration options in nsx before we deploy the edge cluster I should first show you the code that we're going to be using and this is effectively going to be made available to you in the comment section there's a github link with this json available effectively all it is is as you can see at the top passwords edge cluster name the size and t-shirt size of the edge nodes defining the edge nodes fqdn and ip addressing and remember the FQDN needs to be able to resolve. So all of this stuff still gets validated as part of the workflow. It's just that you've got nothing underneath this. As you, usual, as you saw in the previous section, the workflow makes you configure everything that's required, T0, C1s, etc. Here, it's just TEPs, TEP interface IP addresses, management interfaces, and some other options. The cluster ID is effectively just the cluster ID that it's getting deployed to, the vSphere cluster ID that's recognized in SDDC Manager. Again, the video that I linked to about deploying edge clusters will show you how to get all that information. We're not going to show you that here. Cool. So from here, what we need to do is we need to jump back into either wherever you like to run API commands from essentially. So I'm going to run this from Developer Center directly and show you how easy it is to run it from SDDC Manager. So we jump back into SDDC Manager. We scroll down to the bottom, click on Developer Center. We go to API Explorer. I'm going to look for Edge Clusters. So it's NSXT Edge Clusters. We want to validate first, always validate first. So we're going to run a post command, paste that entire output that I just showed you, it, change it to suit your environment, obviously, and then we'll hit Execute. Click Continue. There we can see the status is validation in progress. We can usually, usually you should see this. Okay, since it's it's not showing up here, we should be able to have get grab that validation ID. That's right there, and we'll go down into validations, which is a different API URI. Well, let's have a look and see where it is. Validations. We'll chuck in the ID there and hit execute. Validation is still in progress. You can run this as many times as you want just to verify that it's done and it's succeeded. So we'll check again in a minute or so. I've just hit validate again, or sorry, execute, and we can see it's completed and it's succeeded. Now it goes through all the checks it normally does. If you need to have a look and see where it's failed, if it does fail for you, find one of these, and download the, or have a look at the output and see what it failed on. It could be anything, so I can't guarantee what it is or isn't in your environment. Right, from there, now that we know that this output works, we can actually now just create the edge cluster. So we go to post edge clusters, put the body in oh, that's the id let me go grab the body again all right there we go it's the exact same payload hit execute continue and that has something in the json that shouldn't be there give me a sec to fix that up we should be good now hit go there we go all right so now it's creating you should be able to see this in the active workflows so there you go that should take maybe 10 15 minutes less depending on your environment maybe longer i'll let that finish and then we'll show you what it looks like in nsx and what it has created okay that workflow is now done started at 150 for me and it finished at about 220 so about 40 minutes in my environment which is a bit slower than i was expecting but it is done let's have a look in nsx to see what was deployed we've got two edge nodes here that were deployed as part of this edge cluster under edge clusters, we've got an edge cluster. And then if we open that up, it should have the two edge nodes. There we go. Test one and test two. It should also have tags. Yep, so there you go, VCF created by. So this will allow, you know, it's been created by SDC manager and those edge nodes should be available in uh, the workload domain. So if we go into here, go to edge clusters, there it is. Now, if you went the other way and manually created this stuff and added those tags in NSX, it doesn't actually 
brownfield import into SWC Manager. So remember that. SWC Manager has to create the edge nodes using this workflow to be able to then custom configure NSX and still be able to see them in SWC Manager. One thing to keep in mind too is when you do go life cycling, if you have manually created edge nodes that aren't in SWC Manager, they do still get life cycled because that life cycle management is palmed from SDC manager to NSX manager and then the whole life cycle management of the NSX piece is done in NSX manager. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, so we can see the edge cluster. If we also have a look to see uplink profiles and that sort of stuff, that is also important because it adds a point of confusion. Does it still do all that sort of stuff? And you would think yes, because it still interfaces and communicates with the physical network. Right, so it's created its own transport zone for the uplinks for this edge node or these edge nodes and attached itself to the overlay transport zone that already existed as part of the workload domain. It's created uplink profile this, which would have taken the inputs of what we put in the JSON. Let's have a look at that uplink profile. And then the rest is just the IP stuff that we have specified. Let's go into profiles, uplink profiles, which is this one, click edit. So it defines teamings, which is pretty standard for a deployment. It's got load balance source, uplink one and two, then it's got name teaming policy, uplink one and uplink two. That's just standard for VCF workflow. It defines the transport VLAN and the MTU. So that's really good. So we know now it's deployed a complete uplink profile attached to the edge nodes and edge clusters. Let's have a look and see what it's done in vCenter. Right, let's jump back into here. We've got this is the resource pool that was created for the two edge nodes, two edge nodes attached to it. And then we've also got some port groups that were attached to it. Let's have a look. Yep, there we go. Let's edit this to see this a bit better. It's created two uplink ports. It's attached to the management one, so management communication can happen. And it's got two external VDS port groups. Now, one thing to keep in mind here as well is Every time you deploy an edge cluster, it creates a new resource pool. It creates a new a new set of uplink, uh, these external port groups. So let's say you have 10 edge clusters, you'll have 20 port groups and 10 resource pools, essentially. That looks pretty good to me. So it's effectively allowed us to deploy edge clusters, have them at, at a base amount of communication. So TEP tunnels, TEP traffic, management traffic, and segregated them into their own resource pools, uplink profiles and VDS uplinks. Let's do a quick ping test to make sure we can hit one of these edge nodes. Oops. And there you have it. Works, it's communicating. Now we can just go into NSX, go into networking, do what you want to do. Create a new gateway, T0, call it test. Active, active, active standby, create a stateful one if you want, which you couldn't do before, and attach that new edge cluster. That It's that easy. And remember, in this case, it was a BGP specific use case where we couldn't peer upstream because it had to do multi-hop and we couldn't do that from the workflow. So we went the custom route and then defined it through the manually created T0 gateway and whatever we did subsequently, the tier ones and segments. The other way around that would have been to do static routing and then flip it to BGP once the edges and T zeros and all that are deployed, but it's still very cumbersome to get all the way there and then reconfigure. It's better to just do it all custom through the new workflow.